All right, welcome to chapter four. Uh, we'll take a couple days uh, for the assignment part to do uh, section 4.1, but we'll put it all in one video and then you can go back and forth if you need to. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about sampling and surveys. And so here we go. All these things are what we're gonna be able to do. We should be identify population and sample in a study, identify voluntary response sampling and convenience sampling, explain how these can lead to, bi to bias, uh, how to select a simple random sample, you'll see that as SRS a lot of times with technology or a table of random digits. And uh, we'll describe how to select a sample using stratified random sampling and cluster sampling and distinguish stratified random sampling from cluster sampling and give advantage of each method. Now, the other thing we want to do is explain how under coverage, non-response, question wording, and other aspects of a sample can lead to bias. So lots of different things as we talk about picking your sample of your survey. So that's kind of what uh, this is all about. All right, so let's talk about it. So population is the entire group of individuals we want information about, okay? And a census collects data from every single individual. Everybody's in, in, in the, uh, gets the data, okay? Now a sample is where we take a subset of the individual in the population from which we actually collect data. So again, as we can follow the flow chart here, sometimes it's just not possible to collect everything from a population. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sample and we're gonna collect data from that sample and then we're gonna make an inference about that and kind of make that uh, wider spread to the population that of what the results are. And again, as we talked about before, is that we gotta be careful how we pick that sample because that can lead to some, some uh, information that isn't true or biased or, or or could have some faults in your in your outcome then. All right, so again, the idea here is that uh, we wanna draw conclusions about the whole population based on the sample. So choosing a sample from a large varied population is not always that easy. Uh, a sample survey is a study that collects the data from a sample that is chosen to represent a specific population. Now again, we have to decide what population we wanna describe decide what we want to measure and how are we going to choose a sample that's really really a big part how are we going to, how are we going to sample it um, so choosing individuals from population who are easy to reach it's called a convenient sample now again convenient sample sampling often produces unrepresented data so maybe not the best way to do that um, the design of a statistical study shows bias if it's very likely to underestimate or very likely to overestimate the value you want to know. So bias isn't just bad luck in, a, in one sample. It, it's, it's created by, by what you do. All right. So convenient sampling will almost always result in bias, um, but so will other sampling measures. So if we do voluntary response sampling, uh, that allows people to choose uh, to be in the sample by responding to a general invitation. So internet polls, call in, text in, write in, you know, voluntary response sampling, people, people who self-select participate surveys are usually not representative, okay? You just, you can't just have people volunteer to do it for a variety of different reasons. All right, um, sample chosen uh, by chance rules out of both favoritism by the sampler and self-selection by respondents. Again, random sampling involves using a chance process to determine which members of a population are included. And this is the one that we really want to highlight here. You'll see this SRS many times throughout our book. A simple random sample of size N is chosen in a way that every group of N individuals in the population has an equally likely chance to be selected as the sample. So again, that's kind of the way we want to do things. That, that will help get rid of any type of bias in our sampling if we can, if we can do a simple random sample. All right, now how do you do a simple random sample? Now with technology, you can give each individual in the population a distinct numerical label, one to N, and the number of individuals. Um, use a random number generator. We can use that on our calculator, that there's a calculator to do that. Uh, look in our technology folder that we have. Um, those videos are fantastic. Um, and again, we do that and then choose the individuals that correspond to the, the randomly selected integers. That's certainly one way to do that. That's using our technology. And again, use that tech corner video to take a look at that. All right, now we can use table D. Now that's that's in our packet uh, with our Z table and some other notes that you have. Um, what you can do is give each member of the population a distinct numerical label. Make sure they have the same number of digits. Use as few digits as possible, okay? Read consecutive groups of digits of the appropriate length from left to right across the line in table D. 
ignore any group of digits that wasn't used as a label or that duplicates a label already in there. And then stop once you have your n different labels. And then uh, again, select choose your individuals that correspond to the randomly selected integers. So again, as we look at that with the tables, here we go. Uh, here, uh, here's the you know, different hotels, I guess these are. And uh, we're gonna use line 130. We can just pick any line that we wanna start with from table D. And uh, if we do that, um, here's what table D's line looks like. So all of these have two digits. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda go through the line, okay? So we have 6905, 1648, okay. So again, as we go through there, all right, 69 isn't part of our uh, numbers. It's, it's 01 through 28, so no. All right, five, we'd select that. So Beach Castle is one that's selected. Uh, 16, Radisson, yeah, okay. 48, no, it's not on our list. Uh, 17, the Ramada is. No 87, 17, we already used, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, we can get down to uh, number 20. Uh, that's the C club. So again, the ones that don't fit in our numbers or repeats that we don't use. And then once we get our four random hotels, there we go. That's how we do that. So kind of a different way of doing it. Similar thing to do with technology that creates those jet random numbers. Um, and again, look at that tech corner video. Uh, you'll see how to do that or come see me. All right. Now, again, as we go here, other sampling methods that we're going to take a look at. One of the most common alternatives to simple random sampling is called stratified random sampling. Strata are groups of individuals in a population who share characteristics thought to be associated with the variables that are being studied, that are measured in a study. Now stratified random sampling selects a sample by choosing a simple random sample from each stratum and combining these simple random samples into one overall sample. Now stratified random sampling works best when the individuals within each stratum are similar, they're, they're homogeneous, okay, with respect to what is being measured, and when there are large differences between the strata. Now, when we choose strata that have similar responses within strata, but different responses between strata, stratified random sampling gives more precise estimates than what a simple random sample of the same size does. Okay, so we'll get some practice with that. Now, when, when populations are large and spread over a wide area, we prefer a method that selects groups, the clusters. Of individuals that are near one another. That's the idea of cluster sampling. Now a cluster is a group of individuals in the population that are located near each other and cluster sampling selects a sam sample by randomly choosing clusters and including each member of the selected clusters in the sample. Now clustered sample works best when the individuals in each cluster are heterogeneous. You know they're mirroring the population is what's happening. Now cluster sampling is often used for practical reasons like saving time and money. Okay, because obviously they're near each other, so it's a little bit more convenient. All right, now another way to choose is by systematic random sampling. Uh, systematic random sampling selects a sample from an ordered arrangement of the population by randomly selecting one of the first K individuals and then choosing every Kth individual thereafter. Okay, so systematic random sampling is, is useful in, in some contexts like exit polling at a polling place on election day because an unknown number of voters will come to the polling place that day. Uh, now, again, if there are patterns in the way the population is ordered that coincide with the pattern in a, in a systematic sample, the sample may not be representative of, representative of the population. So it's kind of like there where you select the third person, check every third person or whatever the case is there as, as they do that one. All right, now what can go wrong? All right, the use of bad sampling methods often leads to bias. Your results aren't, aren't accurate, okay, and uh, you can't really base anything off them. Researchers can avoid these by using random sampling to choose their samples. Now, other problems in conducting samples are more difficult to avoid, but, you know, the big things that we're looking for uh, to have recognized bias is under coverage. That occurs when some members of the population are less likely to be chosen or cannot be chosen in a sample, okay? So... Yeah, be careful on that. Now, non-response occurs when an individual chosen for the sample can't be contacted or refuses to participate. Make sure that if you're asking them to participate that you're getting those results back. And then response bias occurs when there's a systematic pattern of inaccurate answers to a survey question. That's the response bias that we have there. Okay, now, some students misuse the term voluntary response to explain why certain individuals don't respond in a sample survey. Now their belief is participation in the survey is optional, voluntary, so anyone can refuse to take part. But what they're really talking about is you're getting a non-response bias. Okay, if you make it voluntary and certain people, you know, like if you post something on the internet and it's only certain people 
respond, yeah, you're in jeopardy of a non-response. Don't say re voluntary response. It's the non-response bias that you have there. All right, so that's everything we're going to do in this section for learning targets. Make sure you understand the terminologies there. We'll get some practice with that sampling with the exercises that we've chosen. So make sure that we're going through those and uh, asking questions and uh, making sure we understand those types of things. So that's it. Until next time, I am Mr. Bowen.